Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Okay, let's talk about tips for how to balance equations. The rules are pretty simple. You have to have the same amount of each type of atom on both sides of the equation when you're done. That's pretty much all there is to it. But there's some tricks that you can use to make this easier. Tip number one, make a chart. So I have hydrogens and I have oxygens. On the reactant side, I have two hydrogens. On the product side, I have two hydrogens. On the reactant side, I have two oxygens. On the product side, I have one oxygen. Now it becomes more obvious what needs balancing. The oxygens need balancing. So let's put a two in front of the water. This gives me two oxygens, and that gives me four hydrogens. Now we need to put a something over here to give me four hydrogens. If you don't know, start guessing. I could put a 1 there, and that would give me 2. I could put a 2 there, and 2 times 2 is 4. So, hey, I did it. Don't try to hold as much information in your head. This is especially useful for visual people. We can see there's 2 hydrogen on the reactant side. There's 3 hydrogens on the product side. There's 2 nitrogens on the reactant side. There's 1 nitrogen on the product side. What do you want to go after? The easy stuff or the hard stuff? Let's try to balance the nitrogens first. It looks more simple. We need to put a number here that's going to give me two nitrogens. That number would be a two. This would give me two nitrogens, but the two also applies to the hydrogens. So how many hydrogens do I have? Six. Because I have two NH3s, so I have six hydrogens. Now I need to put a number here to balance the hydrogens. What times 2 is 6? Is it a 2? That would give me 4. Is it a 3? That would give me 3 times 2 is 6. So that's good. So you can start guessing and you will eventually get there. So trick number 1, make a chart. Start guessing. Eventually, you'll zero in on the correct answer. Zinc, hydrogen, and chloride. The good news is most equations are actually easy to balance. So if the equation is hard to balance, probably did something wrong. I know that the zincs are already balanced. I need a number in front of HCl to give me two hydrogens. That would be a two. This gives me two hydrogens, but it also gives me two chlorines because the two applies to both. And I'm done. So that's great. We don't want to do as much in our heads. The more information you try to store in your brain, the more you're going to forget. So I have four phosphoruses, and on the product side I have one phosphorus, and on the reactant side I have 10 plus one oxygens, so I have 11 oxygens. And then on the product side, I've got four oxygens. On the reactant side, I've got two hydrogens, and then on the product side, I've got three hydrogens. Okay, so let's balance the phosphoruses first. I need to put a number here that's going to give me four phosphoruses. So I need to put a four here. That gives me four phosphoruses. Four times three is twelve hydrogens. Four times four is sixteen oxygens. Now I'll balance the hydrogens by putting a six here. Six times two gives me twelve hydrogens. And then I have 10 oxygens plus 6 oxygens is 16 oxygens. Next rule, procrastinate. I can save the hardest thing for last 
and the hardest thing will generally work itself out automatically. So let's make a list. 7 and 1, 16 and 2, 2 and 3. Now, if we strategize here, we see that carbon is only in two places. That limits your options. Hydrogen is only in two places. That limits your options. But oxygen is in three places. So how do you balance the oxygens? You get a headache. You have much more combinations of choices, and it's better just to ignore the oxygen completely and hope that it works itself out, which it generally will. So, let's balance the easy stuff first. Let's balance the carbons. I have seven on the left and I have one on the right. What do I put here to give me seven carbons? I can put a seven there. That would give me seven carbons. Now, I've got seven times two is 14 oxygens plus one more is 15 oxygens on the right side. Now what? Do I balance the oxygens or do I balance the hydrogens? Well, remember, the hydrogens are only in two places, so you don't have a choice. If you want to balance the hydrogens, you have to put a number there. What number times two would give me 16 hydrogens? Eight. Eight times two is 16. And now I have a disaster. So seven times two is 14 oxygens, plus another eight would be 22 oxygens. So now I have 22 oxygens on the right. I don't have eight more. I have seven more. Now we need to balance the oxygens. It's the only thing left. Fortunately, this isn't very hard. Something times two is 22. What times two is 22? 11. If I put an 11 there, it gives me 22 oxygens. And I'm done. And that wasn't quite the headache it could have been. So you can pick one atom, whichever atom looks the most complicated, and you can save it for last. Let's try it again. I've got carbons, I've got hydrogens, and I've got oxygens. I've got four carbons on the left, I've got one carbon on the right. I've got ten hydrogens in the reactants, I've got two hydrogens in the products. I've got three oxygens in the reactants, and I've got three oxygens in the products. Carbon is in two places. That limits my options. Hydrogen is in two places. That limits my options. But oxygen, <laughs> oxygen is in four places. So which atom is going to be the most complicated to balance? Oxygen. Fortunately, oxygen's already balanced. Unfortunately, as soon as we start balancing the others, it's going to get messed up. So let's just ignore it and hope it goes away. Let's balance the carbons first. Should be easy to do. I need to put a number in front of the carbon dioxide to give me four carbons. I need to put a four here. This gives me four carbons, and it gives me eight plus one oxygens. The eight from here the 8 from here and the 1 here, so that's 9 oxygens, so they're already screwed up, but we're ignoring them, so that's good. We have to keep track of them, but we're going to ignore them. Let's balance the hydrogens now. I need to put a number in front of water to give me 10 hydrogens. Something times 2 is 10. 5 times 2 is 10. This gives me 8 plus 5 oxygens. This gives me 13, 13 oxygens on the right. Now, <laughs> I'm going to employ the guess method. If I start putting a number here, I'll mess everything up. So I'm going to put a number here and try to balance the oxygens that way. Uh, I don't know what number that's going to be. Let's just start guessing. If I put a 2 here, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. That's not 13. So I need a number greater than 2. How about 5? 
5 times 2 is 10 plus 1 is 11. I need a number greater than 5. 6 times 2 is 12 plus 1 is 13. That's what I needed. I needed a 6. So this reaction is balanced. I can pick an atom and I can save it for last. Whichever atom is the most complicated will usually work out more simply at the end if I ignore it till the end. Next tip. Balance the ions. You know your ions. You know that this reaction is made up of sodiums, sulfates, ammoniums, and phosphates. And it looks at first glance like this reaction is extremely complicated, but it turns out it's really not that complicated at all. There's two sodiums on the left, there's three sodiums on the right, there's one sulfate on the left, there's one sulfate on the right, there's three ammoniums on the left, there's two ammoniums on the right, there's one phosphate on the left, there's one phosphate on the right. So, let's balance this. Pro tip, of course it's a video on pro tips, but whatever. If that's a 2 and that's a 3, the least common multiple between them would be 3 and 2. So I can just swap those numbers back. So 3 times 2 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. But I now also have three sulfates, and I now also have two phosphates. So let's balance the next easiest one. We can balance the sulfates. I need to put a number here to give me three sulfates. I'll put a three there. That gives me three sulfates, but it also gives me six ammoniums. Now I can balance the phosphates or I can balance the ammoniums. Let's balance the phosphates. I need to put a number here to give me two phosphates. If I put a two there, that gives me two phosphates, but it also gives me six ammoniums. And do to do, do, oh look, I'm done, yay! So now this equation is balanced. So you can balance the polyatomic ions if the reaction is made of polyatomic ions. This reaction doesn't necessarily look like it's made of polyatomic ions. That's because when the hydrogen and the hydroxide got together, they made hydrogen hydroxide, which is more commonly written as H2O. So this is actually H2O. Now, this reaction would be easier to balance if we change this to look like hydrogen and hydroxide. So this H plus here got together with this hydroxide to make water. So we've got bariums we've got chlorines, we've got H pluses, and we've got hydroxides. One barium, one barium, one chlorine, two chlorines, one hydrogen ion, one hydrogen ion, two hydroxides, one hydroxide. Now this equation is going to be easier to balance. What do we want to balance first? Why not balance the chlorines? I need to put a number here to give me two chlorines. I'll put a two there. That gives me two chlorines, but it also gives me two hydrogens. Now I need to balance the hydrogens. I need to put a number there to give me two hydrogens. I'll put a two there. That gives me two hydrogens, and that gives me two hydroxides. 
and well, look, this equation is balanced. So you can balance the polyatomic ions provided that the equa equation is made up of polyatomic ions. This equation is a double replacement reaction, so I can easily do that. This equation is a double replacement reaction, so I can easily do that. If it's not a double replacement reaction, I need to think long and hard before trying to employ the strategy. This only works because sulfate stayed sulfate. This only works because phosphate stayed phosphate. In a previous example we did, we had tetraphosphorus decoxide became phosphoric acid. So while you see phosphate, was it phosphate on the other side? No. So I would be extremely hesitant to try balancing this reaction with phosphate because phosphate didn't stay phosphate. The last tip, cheat. We've got carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens. Eight carbons, one carbon. Eighteen hydrogens, two hydrogens. Two oxygens, three oxygens. How do I cheat? I need to balance the easy things first. So let's balance the carbons first by putting an eight there. Eight times two is sixteen, plus one is seventeen oxygens. I'll balance the hydrogens next. I need to put something there to give me 18. 9 times 2 is 18. 8 times 2 is 16, plus 9 is 25. I need 25 oxygens. If I'm going to put something here to give me 25 oxygens. I have no idea what that will be. Let's just start guessing. 6. 6 times 2 is 12. That's less than 25. I need a number greater than 6. 11. 11 times 2 is 22. That's still not enough. 12. 12 times 2 is 24. That's still not enough. 13. 13 times 2 is 26. 12 is too little, and 13 is too much. The number I need is somewhere between 12 and 13. I need 12 and a half. 12.5 times 2 is 25. That's the number I need. An easier way to do this, though, is to say I need 25 oxygens. And if I have 25 halves times 2, 25 halves times 2 is 25. So if I put a 25 halves there, this balances the reaction. Now, <laughs> you can cheat and use fractions, but you can't leave that fraction there. So if I multiply the entire equation, if I multiply the entire equation by 2, I'll get rid of that fraction. So I'll have 2 octanes. 25 halves times 2 is 25. 8 times 2 is 16, 9 times 2 is 18, and I'm done. And I'm done with relatively little fuss. I can balance this reaction. It's not exactly hard to do. But I can do it much quicker and much more easily if I balance it by putting a three halves right here. Three halves times two is three, and I'm done. I can't leave that fraction there, but I'm done. So I'll get rid of that fraction by multiplying everything by two to clear out the fraction. Two KClO3s, two KCLs, and three oxygens, and this equation is balanced. Is everyone ready? Let's get ready for chemistry! Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah.